I've got some bad news for you. If you're a junior doctor in England this year, you're effectively working August for free. And in this video, we're going to explore why. Now I'm gonna try and keep this as brief as I can, but there are three things that we need to understand as to why doctors are getting a massive pay cut in England this year. All of them are dry, none of them are interesting, but we need to be able to understand all three in order to make sense of this situation and how urgently we need to do something about it. And please pay attention because if you are thinking about applying for medical school this year, you are already a medical student learning in the UK or you're already qualified as a doctor, this stuff affects you. This is your future earning potential that we're talking about here. The first organisation that you need to be aware of for this to make any sense is the DDRB, the Review Body on Doctors and Dentists Remuneration. They are an independent body which exists basically in order to recommend to the government how much doctors and dentists should be paid in a given year or perhaps more accurately they recommend the scope and scale of any changes to the way that doctors and dentists are paid year on year. The reality is that doctors and dentists are a very unique, highly skilled workforce you have to be very careful with in terms of training, recruiting, employing and retaining in order to keep running your health service. You have to be very careful with them, ensuring that their pay matches up well to other similar highly skilled roles in the public and private sectors. So the theory is, is that every year the DDRB looks at the state of the finances of the country, everything that's going on in the economy, within the workforce and says, look, this year doctors need to be given a 2% pay rise to keep them at parity with other professions or a four and a half percent pay rise or whatever it takes to keep them in line with other professions within the context of a stretched and expensive health force. So the DDRB and the annual pay recommendations, that's the first thing, let's put that to one side. The next thing that we need to understand is the 2019 Junior Doctors Pay Deal and I've left links to all of the key documents for these things that we're talking about in the description below. This came following a review of the Junior Doctors contract of 2016 in 2018, that is a review of the terms and pay that came with the 2016 contract. And this review made some changes to the way that junior doctors are paid in England. This included things like reviewing how much junior doctors are paid for working nights and weekends, payments for those working less than full time to ensure they can keep living and carrying on with their training, the introduction of a fifth nodal point for the most senior decision-making doctors between ST6 and ST8, so those doctors in their final years of training before they became a consultant, and most importantly, a multi-year pay deal between 2019 and 2023. During this review, it was agreed by the BMA that junior doctors would be subject to a 2% pay rise between 2019 and 2023, taken every single year, so an annual 2% pay rise for four years. Now I want to be really careful to point out here that this agreement was the only way that the BMA was able to negotiate getting the additional £90 million of funding released that it takes to fund all of these changes. And this is where this multi-year pay deal comes from, so once again, parking to the side and we'll revisit this in a second. The third and final thing that we need to understand is inflation. This is a term that's used in economics and inflation basically refers to an increase in the cost of goods and living more generally within a particular country or a particular economy. You could also think of it as a measure of purchasing or spending power. So that is to say that if today, for example, I go and I buy a loaf of bread, it might cost me a pound in my local shop. In six months time, I might go to that same local shop buy that same loaf of bread and due to a huge number of circumstantial changes, things like staff shortages, increase in rent and rates for having that shop, the price of the ingredients used to make that loaf of bread, that same loaf of bread now costs me £1.50. Assuming this happens more widely with all the goods and services that I want to buy regularly, my purchasing power, that is what I can do with that same £1 coin that I went to the shop with, has gone down because of inflation. Everything costs more, so my £1 will buy less. One of the ways that you can measure the effects of inflation is something called the Retail Price Index, or RPI. It tracks the cost of a so-called mixed basket of goods, that is household items like food and medicines, as well as services like gas, water, electricity, insurance, and so on, that the typical household might want to buy 
in a given year. RPI tracks the cost of these things over time. We don't need to get into it too much because it's not ultimately important, but it looks at a representative sample of 700 items and services, looks at a load of different price quotes for those items, and that's how this effect is tracked as time goes by. Some things will get cheaper over time, some things will become more expensive, and it's a rolling average of all of these things that we track. Bringing it to today, the 20th of July 2022, this RPI retail price index is sat at 11.7% and only predicted to increase. So bringing us back to the main problem, everything is now 11.7% more expensive, or it costs 11.7% more for general living. Because of this, a worker like a doctor would need their salary to go up by 11.7% in order to have the same purchasing power or to afford the same standard of living buying the same goods and services that they were buying 12 months ago. Of course, in the real world, this doesn't happen. People don't get annual 11.7% pay increases. As junior doctors living and working in England, we have been on a downwards pay trend with respect to inflation since 2008, 14 years ago, with a between 22 and 26% real terms pay cut relative to inflation since that time, depending on the exact numbers that you use. And so even though doctor's salaries have appeared to go up on paper, year on year, it's actually a real terms pay decrease year on year on year when you factor in the effects of this inflation. Because to actually be earning more in real terms in a given year, you need your salary increase to be higher than the current level of inflation. Anything less than that is a real terms pay cut. So to round out this story, the DDRB this year have released their recommendation report, and they have recommended a 4.5% pay rise for so-called eligible doctors, and a series of other pay rises for different NHS and healthcare workers, usually trending such that the lower earning workers within the NHS should receive a higher pay rise, which is kind of what you would expect. The problem with this for us is that these recommendations do not include junior doctors or any other group that is already subject to a multi-year pay deal, such as junior doctors that are locked into a 2% existing pay agreement. The DDRB actually acknowledges in their report that giving too small a pay rise to healthcare workers risks the quality of care, because ultimately staff are not going to be retained, they're going to leave, and they're not going to be willing to work extra hours. None of these are things you can afford to happen if you want the NHS to actually work and it actually makes any savings in salary that you get from paying people less worthless in the overall picture because you'll end up paying locum and agency workers to fill in all these gaps that you'll have and you have to spend back the money you've saved in order to keep running your service. So what has actually happened in the real world is that the government has told the DDRB not to consider any group that is already subject to a multi-year pay deal, such as junior doctors, in their recommendations. As such, the DDRB have not been able to make a recommendation for junior doctors. The government has done what governments do and spun it for their own ends by saying we have accepted all of the recommendations made by the DDRB, despite the fact that no recommendation for junior doctors was actually made at all. So they basically just pass the buck on to someone else as they are wont to do. To round this out, what does that mean for junior doctors? Well, you can do the maths yourself. If we are getting a 2% pay rise in a year where RPI is 11.7%, we are effectively getting a 9% pay cut this year. Our spending power is 9% less. That is the equivalent of working the entire next month of August, and actually a little bit more, if you plug in the numbers for yourself, completely for free. All of this abstract pay stuff doesn't make sense until you start to put it into physical terms like that. So what happens now? What can we do? The only thing that I can recommend you do is join the BMA. We need to be part of a union that has the membership numbers and volume to successfully ballot for industrial action if that's what it comes to. The current position from the UK BMA Junior Doctors Committee is that if a plan for full pay restoration to 2008 levels is not agreed by the end of this calendar year, then we will immediately ballot for industrial action. But all I can say is join the union and be ready because things are going to change very rapidly over the next coming weeks and months. So stay tuned, watch this space, I'll keep you updated as things happen. Take care guys, see you next time.